Today we're going to be cleaning the caliper and changing the brake pads on a Brembo Monoblock M4. Some of the only differences between this particular caliper and most of the other common ones you see on sport bikes is that this has no pin that the brake pads actually are guided or slide on. Whereas some other brake cal calipers you will see there's a pin right here or two pins here and here that uh, need to be loosened before we start taking the caliper off uh, because it's a bit hard to hold the caliper in hand and come and, and undo them later. Um, but this particular one, the brake pads, um, I'll show you this particular spring in a moment. They're held in under this spring's pressure and they, they slide across. Um, there's no pins that guide these brake pads across. Uh, but other than that difference, the rest of the process is fairly identical. The first thing we need to do is loosen the caliper bolts that hold the caliper on. Now if you've noticed, I've got my wheel on the ground, not up on a, on a front stand, uh, mainly because my front stand that goes up into the triple tree pin uh, gets in the way of the caliper. So it shouldn't take too much effort at all to loosen these. And once they're loose, you can just use a little hex nut uh, or allen key to uh, undo them. We don't want to get any dirt on the threads of these bolts because I've got copper grease on them. We don't want any of that dirt and grit going back in to the, to the bolt hole. So keep these in a safe place. I've got a magnetic uh, bolts tray. Next for the caliper itself, once we get it off, I've just got a little metal hook here on some string that I'm gonna hang the caliper from something like the handlebar. Now when we get the caliper off, we're pulling straight back on the same plane as the actual brake disc. We don't wanna be pulling outwards or inwards or wriggling it um, side to side, only wriggling it back to forth, back and forth to get it off the disc without bending. Okay. Unclip the little brake line guide. We can hang the caliper so the weight isn't on the actual brake line itself. Just like that. So if you have a look what we have here, and please, please disregard how little brake pad material I have left. I know I've been needing to change these for a while, but I wanted to uh, make sure I filmed it for you guys. So the way that we get the brake pads off on this particular caliper is we bring the brake pad into the middle. Can you see where these gaps are? And it pops out and then the second one comes out. So uh, to make it a little bit easier to do that, I'm going to uh, just use a little bit of leverage just to pop the brake pads into the middle guide or the middle vein and they just fall out. Now if you can see on these brake pads, there's a little slit. Now what happens when you're braking is the brake pad material is rubbing on the disc and it's creating gases. Now these gases need, uh, need to escape, but also um, when you're riding in the wet, water needs to escape as well. Um, so that, that's sometimes why you find these veins in the brake pads, but that, the second thing that can be used for is an indicator of when the brake pads need to be changed. So when they get very close to, having, uh, to going straight to the brake pad backing, or just before it, so right now, I probably left these too long, that's when you know you need to change them or you should be changing them. Second thing to note about the brake pads is this particular gap here inside the caliper. This is how these brake pads are guided using these two fins on the end and this gap in the middle. Whereas in a, a more traditional brake pad, there'll be like a, a circle here and it'll come all the way across and that's where the brake pin goes and it slides back and forth on that. 
So in, the, in your other calipers, that's why you have the brake pins. Now the way a braking system works is when you squeeze that lever, it pushes brake fluid down the brake line into the cavity on both sides of the brake caliper and you get equal pressure behind all of these pistons and then these pistons come out and in an ideal world they will push out at the same time for the same distance and squeeze the brake pads together against the disc. Now the reason we need to clean this is because these brake pad pistons um, are in contact with this fluid and there's a little seal here that stops the fluid coming out. Now we need to make sure these are clean so they're slippery and they slide back and forth against that seal smoothly and evenly. If one of them becomes a little stickier with a little more friction than the others, then some, let's say this one, then three of the pistons will come out first and this one won't until you get excessive pressure, which means that one side of the brake pads will wear before the other side does. And if it's in a worst case scenario, the side that you're looking at might have more brake material than the other one. So you might end up getting wearing the brake pad down a little too soon on one side, but thinking you're okay. So that's one reason. The second reason is that the feeling at the lever and also the braking power is affected when they're not evenly coming out. So you want the best brakes possible because that's the most important part of a, a motorbike. So we're gonna clean this with some soapy water, get all this black brake dust off and have them shining like new again. Um, I do use a little bit of brake clean, but I do a majority of the cleaning just with soapy water in a spray bottle and an old toothbrush. Now when we begin, the first thing that I like to do, and you do this very, very gently, you do not want one of these popping out, is squeeze the brake lever just a little bit. And you see the pistons start to come out. So I want them to come out just a little bit to expose a little bit more of the dirt so we can clean that off and pay close attention in case one of the pistons starts coming out a little bit too much more than the others. So can you see here? This one's come out the most and this one's come out the least. Sometimes if one comes out too much and you need more to come out, you just push one back a little bit and keep squeezing very slowly. That one's coming out too much. All right, and if they're not playing nice, We're going to wedge something in between these so it stops coming out and the other ones can come out a little bit more. Squeeze a little bit more. There we go, the other ones start coming out now. Try and push that in there and hold this one out. Try and get that last one out. There we go. So you can see they're all out a decent amount. Definitely no more than this, otherwise it's gonna pop out and you have brake fluid everywhere. Believe me, I've done it before. And uh, now we're gonna take a toothbrush and soapy water to it. Now it's a good idea if you can, to keep as much of this grit as possible away from the brake disc. I mean, we will clean that later, but it's just gonna be easier if we can keep it clean now. Okay, soapy water. Scrub. More soapy water. And I probably should have gloves on. So you might see in the next few shots that I've magically uh, got gloves on. The magic of camera editing. So basically just scrub and rinse, scrub and rinse. Making sure you use the toothbrush to get up and around and behind the pistons as well. If you can see already, these are These are like a, a dark gray color, and you can already tell that they're cleaner than they were before. Um, but basically we have to get this whole caliper, either silver or shiny and slippery like these pistons.
Right, one thing that I forgot to show you is the, uh, the spring that puts tension on the brake pads. That needs to come out. We probably should have taken that out before we started cleaning. So that just uh, slides out like that. Now remember the orientation that this is in because it needs to go back in in exactly the same way. So we'll take that out and we'll keep cleaning. Once you're happy with uh, how clean your caliper is, what I normally like to do is just get some plain water, not soapy water, and just give it a quick rinse, just to get some of the soap residue off. Okay, and since we've got most of the external grit off with soapy water, to get some of the last final bits off, this is where I use the brake clean. A few quick squirts on the dirty bits. And what the brake clean will do as well is evaporate some of that water. All right, so as a part of the next step, I'm just gonna dry most of this water off. What we're gonna do now is give it a good spray of silicon spray. Now sil silicon spray, will s once uh, all the solvent evaporates, um, is gonna keep all the dirt off the pistons. Um, so next time you clean them, it's gonna be really easy to get all that dirt off. Just as you saw, it was super easy to get the dirt off this time. So just spray the whole inside with the silicon spray. Wipe any excess off, and we'll just let the rest dry when the solvent ev evaporates. Okay, so now it's all clean. It's got the silicon spray on. So now we're going to push the pistons back in far enough to get the new brake pads in. Remembering the new brake pads have a lot more material on them, so they won't slide in in the same position that the pistons were in before. So again, with this step. We want to push the pistons in slowly because when you push one in, it's going to put pressure on the others and we don't want them to pop out. So slowly push them all in, keeping an eye on some of the other pistons that might pop out. Just like that. You don't want to push them completely flush back. Uh, but now that we have more space, I'm just going to come in one more time and wipe off any of that excess silicon spray that might be in there. Um, especially just sitting as a little puddle in the, in the pistons themselves. We don't want any slippery stuff dripping out onto the actual brake disc or, or the new brake pads. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some copper grease on this little spring before we put it back in. Now sometimes the manuals of your bikes will recommend these springs or if your bike has the, the pins that the brake pads slide on, they recommend that those be replaced every single uh, brake pad change. Uh, but of course if you are careful with your bike, you take care of it or like if you just inspect it to make sure that there's no damage or then you should be able to, to use it again. So my bike's got 30,000 kilometers. I'm still using this same spring and I've had no troubles. So just a little bit on here. Just some copper grease to cover both sides of the spring. Wipe away any excess. Now for the new brake pads. So you take them out of the packaging. Make sure if your hands are dirty, don't touch the surface of the brake pad material. Now I've found it's uh, with these particular calipers, it's easy to put them in one by one because you have to slide them in and to the side. 
um, whereas the calipers with the pin, sometimes it's easier to put them both in and then you, you put the pin through and hold them in place. But with this one, you've got to slide them in and get these two fins underneath these two um, little retaining things. Making sure the pin in the back doesn't pop out of place when you do this. There we go. You can just get your hands in behind and pull it back against the actual pistons. Making sure you have enough room to slide the other one in through the middle and off to the side as well. It's just a quick comparison of the amount of material on a new pad and an old one. Can you see the amount of material on the new and the old one? Just didn't push the pistons in enough on one side. I'm just getting this pad in. There we go. Okay. So both pads in, both pushed against the piston with enough room to get your brake disc in as well. Now whatever you do, do not touch your brake lever until this is back on the disc. However, before we put it back on the disc, we're just going to hang it in a little makeshift hanger here. And we're going to clean the brake disc. Remember, this had all the dirty, crappy water on it, so we're going to get a fresh towel. get your brake clean both sides of the towel or enough on the towel to get both sides of the disc and just spin the wheel get all that old brake dust and dirt off the brake disc especially if you're changing compounds or brands of brake pads you, gotta, you may even want to get the rough side of a, a scotch bright pad or even some very, very light sandpaper just to get all the crap off here um, because the way that brakes work is the brake dust or the brake pad material creates friction with the brake dust that it leaves on the rotor. So if it, was, if it didn't leave or embed any uh, brake pad material into the rotor itself, the brakes wouldn't work very well. I'm cleaning them just out of habit uh, because I'm putting the same brand and uh, compound of brake pad on. But it should mean the bedding process will be perfect so we know that both brake discs are starting from the same point with the same amount of brake pad material and the same amount of level of cleanliness. Okay, we have a clean caliper with clean pistons. We have a clean brake disc. We have fresh pads in. Next step is to reassemble it all. So remember, we've made enough of a gap between the pushing the pistons in and uh, pushing the brake pads against the pistons to now gently put this back onto the brake disc. And remember, uh, clipping in the brake line retainer. So that's step one, and at this point, you can gently squeeze your brake lever to put a bit of uh, pressure back on to center. There we go. To center this on there to just let it hold for a bit. Next, we're coming back to the caliper bolts. So what I like to do again 
with either a bit of brake clean or soapy water or, or just wiping them. Let's get all the old dirt off. And when I put these back on, I've got copper grease on these threads. So we'll get all the old copper grease on, put some fresh stuff on. wipe any excess off. Now it's important, unless you're an experienced mechanic and you've done this a hundred times, that you use a torque wrench to tighten these down to make sure, number one, that, that you don't under tighten them and then the caliper comes loose and, and that's a definite safety issue. Or two, you don't over tighten them and strip the threads on the bolt and then it's a whole headache to get that fixed. Torque wrench set to the right settings, which in this particular case is 35 newton meters. Always check the manual for your particular bike. Okay. One. There's two. Now, despite what you think about these bolts, they're not as tight as you would expect. Okay, so that one's done. Repeat the same for the other side. And for the bed-in process, there's a hundred different rules that people say out there. Accelerate to like 50 k's an hour and slow down medium 10 times. Accelerate to 70 k's an hour and slow down a little bit harder another 10 times. Whatever it is, just take it easy for the first few brakes because they will not be as good as when they bed in. So take it easy for the first few brakes and just progressively get harder. Maybe take it around for uh, the block a couple of times on a test ride, getting uh, braking slightly harder and harder each time until they start to feel good enough to ride in traffic or at the track. Mm -hmm.